Welcome to Indwasa Arts Festival 2021 and these are conversations with writers. This year's theme is Reignite. My name is Shamaine Mudao and today I will be talking to our lovely Ngosi Hi Ngosi. Hi Shamaine, how are you? How, I'm alright and you? I'm good thanks and thank you for having me. You're welcome. So Ngosi, tell us about yourself. Who is Ngosi within the literal space and outside of it? Um, within the literal space, I'm a one-time published author. I'm a three-time, three? Yes, three-time three contributing author. But outside of the literal space, first of all, I think of myself as someone's child, first of all. And then, you know, I'm someone's sister, I'm someone's friend. I'm, you know, a hundred faces one girl, I guess. Yeah, Nkosi, I, I understand that you write across platforms. Yes. You do narrative, you do screen. Where does your heart lie? Um, in screen, obviously, because that's what I wake up to do every day. And mostly because I think screen trained me to do something that I wasn't very used to. You know, growing up, I didn't play team sports. I didn't do anything teamwork related. I thought of myself as, you know, lone wolf and whatever. But when you start working in, in, in film, you realize that um, screen is just, I do, my job is just to, you know, type up a couple of pages and then what the end result is the result of everybody else's work. So I think it really taught me to appreciate the value of teamwork and, you know, the value of a pack over being a lone wolf, as I said. Okay, what inspired you to write? Was it a personal thing or it's just an observation from the society? It's, it's a lot of things. When it comes to writing within literature spaces, like my, my debut book, that was very, very personal. I would have been happy with just writing it and keeping it in my laptop. That was a very personal choice, very therapeutic process. But then when it comes to writing for screen, that for me is I try to reflect what I think happens in the everyday. And I also try to, you know, distract people from things that happen in their lives because, I mean, life sucks. You know, we're not <laughs> going to make jokes about it. Life does suck. So when I write for screen, I try to distract people from, you know, the suckiness of life and offer alternate universe where, you know, the guy gets the girl and things like that. So you said your first one was a personal thing. Yes. Do you mind sharing in brief what it was about? Okay, so uh, my, my, my first, I can't, I can't even call it a novel. My, my first book is Drafts 100 Letters That I'll Never See, oh. which you have right It's yeah. this one, <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. It's this one. <laughs> so, what that is, it's, it's a collection of a hundred letters that I wrote over maybe a year or two. So it's different letters to different people that I've met, different boys that mm. I almost loved and I regret it. And, <laughs> you know, my friends, my family and um, things that I've come across, you know, inhumane th things that are not human. But I have come across them and I appreciate them because I wouldn't be the person that I am today if I hadn't had encounters with either these people or these things or these fictional characters. So that's what it was. Also, <laughs> because I'm just one of those people, I'm terrified at expressing my emotions. So I thought to myself, let me do this once in one book and I never have to do it again. So I'm done. Where's the camera? I'm, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I'm never doing this again. So I put it in a book and that's it. I'm done. Okay, okay. So congratulations Thank on this, you. by the way. Congratulations. <laughs> so are there any prevalent themes that guide your work each time when you write or you just do random writing? It now comes again to my two loves because when you work in film and when you're writing something that you're not producing, you're given a brief mm -hmm. of your producer says, okay, I want a story about this, 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 this. And in that case, I can't, you know, because I'm selling my soul, so I can't really make a choice about, about, about things like that. But there are things that I will definitely turn down if it doesn't resonate with me. But what I like is just a representation of normal characters, people that you run into on, on a day-to-day. -day. I don't want to, you know, create superficial characters that no one can relate to. I also don't want to create characters that are just, you know, so sad and so disappointed and crying all the time because that's emotionally, that's heavy, I think, on the person who creates and on the person who consumes what has been created as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, talking about this book, uh, how many copies have you sold and which avenues do you use? I'm left with maybe four or five out of the hundred and this was December last year and for a first time unknown author, pretty proud of myself. 
and uh, but the avenues that I use, I do have ebooks on Amazon. I do have maybe a couple of copies left at Shop Distributor, uh, which is 14th Avenue in Robert Mugabe, and I have a few copies also in at Innovate Bookshop in Harare. So yeah, and I sell some out of my car. So yes. Okay. Well, this is Ngoslesi Sangube and these are Conversations with Writers. Soon after the break, we'll be talking about the state of media and festivals in literary arts. Welcome back to Conversations with Writers. We still have Nkosi and we're talking about everything literary arts. So Nkosi, tell me, as an author and as a young woman, do you think that there are stories that are supposed to be told only by women and why? Um, I don't... Listen, I think we should all be aware of our biases. And this is not to say that there's no man that can write about a woman. But I think for a male person to write about a woman, or for myself as someone who identifies as a straight woman, unfortunately I'm attracted to men, but as someone who identifies as a straight woman to write about maybe someone in the LGBTQ community or someone as a Christian to talk about someone from a minority religious group, I think there are certain biases that you need to be aware of. And then you now need to watch those biases as you write. Because in some instances you might think that you're doing the community whatever community you're trying to represent a favor by telling their story but in essence if it's not done well it ends up being a disservice to those people because what you end up doing is you end up perpetuating stereotypes and you end up putting out more misinformation and more misrepresentation about them so am i saying that it can't be done no it can be done but it requires a lot of work it requires you to read it requires you to consult with people to find a way of talking about other communities in a way that's not um, condescending to them and in a way that's not disrespectful to them. It's hard, but it's doable. Okay, I, I understand that you're now talking about the process of writing. Going back to you, yes. what, what's the process like? What do you do when you tell yourself, now I'm writing? What is it that you go through when you tell yourself, now this is it, outside the personal um, space? Yeah. So what I do usually is, my process is very simple, luckily I'm just one of those cheap writers. <laughs> what I need to do, I need to be by myself and I need really, really loud music on because for some reason I can't hear myself think when my environment is quiet. So I need it to be loud and somehow my thoughts need to be louder than that. So if, especially people who work with share office space with me have complained about it because I have earphones on and I'm singing along and things like that but then that's when I start hearing myself but then before that there's a, a huge process of development and, and, and research and I think maybe research is something that a lot of people might neglect which is why you end up coming up with this one dimensional stories and one dimensional characters because people don't want to invest themselves into like research and, and really finding out the world of the story that you're talking about or the nature of, of you know the people and the, the, the dynamics of the societies that you're trying to, to represent. So research before anything else. Okay, what's the reading culture amongst authors and then of course the readers in Zimbabwe? Amongst authors I like to think because I don't know if the literary pool, I'm going to talk about Bulawayo because that's where I am, I don't know if the reading pool is all that big but what I try to do is if there's a, a local author I, read, I try to read their work and I've seen a re English reciprocity, that's the word, right? <laughs> reciprocity, uh, when I launched my book, I had some local authors like read that as well. So it's, to see, you, you also get in the general environment what works and, and what doesn't. If uh, something works for, for, if something works for, say, Leroy, then maybe it might work for me. So you borrow from other people and you learn what they're doing so that you know whether to you know, uh, adopt a similar style or maybe branch out. But even as you break rules, you're breaking rules that you know, you know. But then amongst people, here's my thing. I think it's more important that your work is consumed than that it is read, right? Because mm -hmm. there's a difference between consuming something and reading something. So I, people are very quick to say, oh my goodness, reading culture is dying. 
it is but then the essence of it is it's not so much that you're like holding a book to your face then that you're consuming the knowledge and the information that's in the book so for me if someone turns a book into a film that's still fine that's not something that i'm gonna get mad about i'll be like oh no tv is stealing our audience and whatever mm -hmm. so that's if i can give you an example um the Shomu series from mm -hmm. south africa yes. that's becoming showmax's first telenovela i'm not gonna get mad and say oh people are not reading and people's brains are dying i'm like no that's actually reaching you out to a worried about the reading culture i'm just more worried about the consumption of cultural goods as as a whole okay Nkosi, allow me to take you back to yes. issues of gender in mm -hmm. literature yes. what's what's the representation of women why is it we have a lot of sad stories when it comes to women in zimbabwe i think it's because we think people identify with sadness i think maybe some people and this is this is just a thought i didn't say anything. Um, <laughs> thought, uh, I think we think that you know if we, which is because I work in like you already mentioned, I work in film and I work in 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 narrative fiction. I think we think when we see someone crying, we think that's a performance. Mm -hmm. But that's just one part of us. Like you've been a sad girl at some point in your life. I've been a sad woman at some point in, in my life. But that's not the whole thing. You know, you've had victories. I've had victories. You've had, you know, you've been in love. You've fallen recklessly in love, and that's been good. And you've had achievements. But then the problem is we want to focus more on, you know, the tears and everything because somehow we think that powerful writing or powerful performances uh, are based on tears and crying and, and, and suffering. And even when it comes to film, I've, I've made a deliberate effort. I don't like seeing tears on screen. There's enough of that in the world already. I, mm -hmm. just, I just want to see a normal life. <laughs> that's what I want to see. So, yeah. so we have more of victims than heroes. I think, yeah, but I, I think the I think the narrative is changing. I was reading um, Dombi, who's like a, a great writer from Blaio. Her book is called In Thirty Days, and I was reading her book, and it was so it was it was a love story, but then it was a love story about how a person learns to love themselves before they can love somebody else, and that to me was very powerful. I, there were no like. Uh, traumatic I mean obviously there were tears because she got dumped somewhere in the book but then it was like those traumatic tears and it was, it was about a person getting up from you know rock bottom and learning how to save herself and learning how to be her own person and I celebrated that because I think we need more of that we need more victories in the stories that we that we read because again like I said life sucks we don't need life to suck in in fictional universes as well okay uh, talking about you as an in, as an uh, emerging uh, author, yes. what's your impression on the whole literary sector? Did you have any expectations when you got in? What has changed ever since you started writing? Well, I'm a published author for one, so that's nice. But um, I think again, my expectations were very low because, like I said, I didn't do this for anyone other than myself, right? I did it for me, and in my head, I'm like, I people want to buy it, they'll buy it. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, then ah, fine, whatever, I'll just you know, some <laughs> some I don't know. But that's the thing. I, I did it for myself, but then to get a, a reception that's that good, it was, it, it does something to your self esteem. Because another thing with artists and writers, like your 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 self esteem is one of the currencies that you have. Your ego is a currency that you have, and that needs to be stroked regularly so when someone calls and they're like oh can i have a copy of your book or i see someone post like a little review on on, on social media that does something for me and i'm really grateful for that okay Nkosi. what what is the role of media in terms of marketing and publishing your work okay i think it's uh, there's supposed to be a duality there and i'm, I'm speaking as a person who worked in a newsroom for, for for a little bit the the issue with us artists is we think just because I've done something it's worth writing about mm -hmm. but I'm gonna go back and speak as a person who worked in a newsroom on the arts desk I'm gonna write about something if I feel that it is worth writing about so it's one of those I I would be glad to get maybe a review or get an article maybe on a newspaper or get an interview maybe on TV or whatever but if I don't get that I'm not going to turn around and say, hey, like Wangani and Prusa against me or whatever. No, it's because maybe the material that I have released is not something that, you know, they feel is worth 
writing about and that's okay because it now shows me okay, next time where do i go what do i do differently how can i be better i think there's a general sense of entitlement over oh, see i've put something out so now talk about me no we're only going to talk about you if you've done something we're talking about and that's how i see things okay going back to the no actually talk yes. let's talk about uh languages yes. when it comes to writing mm -hmm. What's the state like when we talk about literary arts in Zimbabwe? Is there a difference between selling and developing novel, English novel, Shona, Venda, Sutu? Is there any difference or it's just the same thing? It's all about language. This could, and this is just me thinking about it from a general perspective because I've only written in, in English, right? But then generally, I think your literature in Zimbabwe only has like a chance of going nationally known if it's a set book, right? Mm -hmm. And if you write it in Debele, because there's so few people writing in, in, in Debele, Sutu, Venda, whatever, because there's so many, there's so few people writing in vernacular languages, then the chances of your book making it into a set book end up getting high. Mm -hmm. But now the problem with that is, people are not making the deliberate choice to read that. People are being forced by, and I don't know if you want that, get it like mm -hmm. I I want people to read because they want to know because they're trying to pass their O level or, or or whatever it is but then I think which is I guess a market that some people may have identified we'll see if I write this it's probably gonna make it into a set book and then that's possibly the best way that I can sell which it, you know it's fine I don't judge where people's bread comes from that's fine um, but with English it's now harder because you're not only competing with you know people in your city or people in your country you're competing with with Shakespeare and you're not gonna win that you can compete with Shakespeare and win so yeah okay wh what do you think needs to be done uh, for the sector to develop the literal arts sector and television since you write for screen <laughs> political correctness um, I think it's the sectors are the way that they are because of a bigger problem right we can go to town about how oh publishers don't want to take our books or oh tv stations don't want to you know commission our projects but the question is are they in a position to do that okay right so i think it becomes like it's it's, it's a it's a it's an issue of of the bigger picture where is the problem the problem might be it's reflected maybe in the arts but i don't think that the problem is in the arts because now the issue is um you sell your book or you as a performer you say i've got i've, I've got a play and it's it's five bucks right five dollars in the grand scheme of things is not much but because we live where we live mm -hmm. it now looks like a lot of money because a lot of people can't afford that so people can can't invest themselves into the arts or into literature to a point where the arts and literature which are basic information and information is supposed to be a basic right but because of where we live, those things are now viewed as what? As luxuries. So I think, it's, I think it's a bigger problem. We can only do what we can do. And what we can do at this point, I think, is to work as hard as we can. And hope and pray that one day things get better. But I think the problem is much bigger than something that can be fixed within one sector or one industry. Okay. Well, we have this issue of piracy. Yes. You know, yes. you get a soft copy. Next thing, you get a message. Hi, Charmaine, can you please send on WhatsApp? Then, <laughs> hi, Nkosi, can you please send? Yeah. Hi, Wushle, can you please yeah. send? You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's an ongoing thing. Yes. How do you deal with that as an author? Because honestly, this issue of sending soft copies mm -hmm. is, is something which is becoming a problem. So as an author, how do you protect your work? I blue tick. I no, know. because... <laughs> no. But listen, Nkosi, you're the only one who's blue ticking here. What if I don't mm -hmm. blue tick? What happens? No, because the thing is... I'm going to look out for myself mm -hmm. right because at the end of the day that's who I have to answer to when my book first came out you have no idea how many messages I got I want to visit I tell me PDF send me. no I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna send you a PDF <laughs> what right mm -hmm. but and, and that's something that I ignored because I'm the only one who has like in the entire world I'm mm -hmm. the only one who has it so if it gets out best believe it's because of me so even if you see so many million copies of, 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 of another book, a soft copy out there. Mm -hmm. It's because of one person who did it, right? Unless, of course, because even 
um, the ones that are on Amazon, those are read, I guess, I think, um, <clears throat> those are read exclusively through Kindle, and those are hard to share. Okay. Right? So if you see someone with a PDF of my book, that's because of me. And I think that's because it's the same thing with everybody else. If you see someone with a PDF, you gave one person that you trusted, and that was not wrong. But that one person that you trusted gave it to two people that they trusted. They gave it to three people that they trusted, and then it becomes like a vicious circle. So I don't care. Like I, I don't care how much I love you. That's one thing that I'm not gonna do, because that's where my sense comes from. <laughs> Fellow authors, learn from Gosi. Blue tick, red tick, yellow tick. Do not share your work with anyone. Let's talk about festivals in Gosi. Have you ever attended any literal arts festival? Oh, fun fact, this book was launched at um, Andrasa Extra last year in December, so thank you. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> Please thank you, Duasa. Please thank yes. you, Duasa Arts you Festival. Yes. Festival. So that's where I, I, I launched my book. But outside of festivals, I think I've been to the Zimbabwe International Book Fair a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And again, the problem there is we have a lot of textbooks, which is fine. But then again, where is like the little guy? Where's the person who writes for fun? Where's the person who, you know? So, yeah. So what needs to be done? What really, really needs to be done when they are setting up these festivals? What is it that you want? I want to be able, and I'm, I, this is just hypothetical in my head because I don't want to speak from a place of misinformation. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe an issue of how much are the stands there? How much is registration, you know? Uh, a lot of authors, especially first-time authors like myself, are you know you may we may not be able to afford like a stand there. So maybe I'm thinking they should be maybe subsidized, um, subsidized prizes for people to get there and to get people, the general public, to get to appreciate that there's something called like a book fair because you'll be surprised at how many people don't even know when these things are happening that is something like this happening because the example is right now we have trade fair going on and everybody knows that but why, why can't we do that for a book fair why are you part are you part of trade fair this year no why goes because i'm not a trader <laughs> 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 what? Okay. So, yes, I wish, like, I think we need the same. I think we need the same hype for maybe book fairs and and arts festivals and literary festivals. Mm -hmm. The same kind of, you know, pomp and and the same kind of theatrics that we have for trade fair. Why can't we put that same energy into into arts festivals, into literary festivals, into book fairs? Okay, Ngozi, if you were to, to practice a, a different genre, say you are not writing, mm -hmm. you are not acting. We are in Zan. I would be a teacher. Yep, I was raised by teachers. I always thought it was interesting. Yeah, I'd, be, I'd probably be a teacher. So you want to be a teacher because yeah. you think it's interesting? Yeah. What exactly? Okay, what exactly do you want mm -hmm. to specialize in when it comes to, to teaching? I'd probably, I don't know, kids are exhausting. No, not <laughs> primary school, but I think I'd probably be like an English teacher or history teacher. Okay. That's the thing, like I love languages and I love, and I love stories. So, yeah, either English teacher or history teacher. Okay. Uh, if I wasn't doing what I'm doing. Uh, outside the li literature space, yes. you what are my favorite artists outside literature? Outside literature, mm -hmm. man. She say outside literature. Do people who write, <laughs> who write for film and TV count? Can I can I include those? I think you can include those. It's fine. Okay. Yes. Uh, when I grow up, I want to be Shonda Rhimes. But I was watching this interview of hers where she said you can't want to be someone else because that person's already taken. Mm. So wow. I don't want to be her. I want to be like her. <laughs> I guess no. She's like a, a huge inspiration to me. Uh, Tisha is a cool from SA. I think she's good. Musically, locally, I think we're sleeping on this young lady called Kyla Black. I found her on Instagram and on YouTube, and I think she's really good. Mm -hmm. And I hope it's not. I hope she hasn't been like appreciated else. By the time we find her, I hope she hasn't been appreciated elsewhere by some people when we have failed to do that. Okay. Okay. When we come back, we say goodbye to Ngosi, but after. She has written, she, she has read this for us. She needs to read this for us.
Welcome to Conversations with Writers. Over to you, Ngozi. Okay, so I'm going to read one of the letters. Uh, it's titled, To Anyone Thinking of Writing a Book. <clears throat> to anyone thinking of writing a book, please do. As I wind down the writing of these letters, the only thing I can think of is, why didn't I do this sooner? There's so much story inside of you. You may, no you may not know it now, but trust me, once you sit behind your desk and start aggressively poking at your keyboard, I promise you will realize how much you have to tell. Tell it. Of course, you will never be able to exhaust all of what you are thinking, but what little you can, do. The world is waiting for your voice. Although I should say, it isn't so much about the reception as it is about your process. You will love writing a book, you will hate it sometimes, it will tire you, it will scare you, but I swear it will teach you more about yourself than anything has before. You will be a little uncertain at first, but as you go further, the words will spill out of your heart and straight onto the page. I cannot wait to read it. Thank you, thank you. So as a reminder, if someone needs this book, where can they buy it? Uh, they can buy it in Bulawayo Sharp Distributors, 14th Avenue and Robert Mugabe, or contact me, my Facebook, should I give my social Yes, media? please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my Facebook is Ngosi Space Gwanele Space Nube. My Instagram is Ngosi Gwanele Nube. My Twitter is at Ngosi K, which is N-K-O-C-Y-K-A-Y. Okay, thank you, Ngosi. This was the amazing, amazing, amazing. So this was Nkosi, and my name is Shamein Mudau, and these are conversations with writers at Intuasa Arts Festival, Gobulawayo. The theme is Reignite. Thank you very much. <laughs>